Hello, beloved of the Lord. This is Bev Potter. It's Friday, September 7th, 2018. All right, I just uh, wanted to come on quickly and uh, share with you a little bit out of a, a word, actually two words, that I received recently. Uh, I think they're extremely important, and I would just like to make them available to you. It's concerning the man-child and the birthing of the man-child and what actually we're looking at uh, taking place there. So I would just like to like just read a couple of selections out of here. And then what I'll do is leave an email address down below. And if you would like a copy of the full word, you can uh, just give me your, send me your email and I will forward that to you. All right, so this is a word given to Tanya Francis. And the Lord is talking to her about receiving a new soul, a new ministry, and a new direction. And what I would really like to focus on is the new soul. Because we know that when we receive Jesus Christ, we our spirits are renewed. And our spirits come to life, and they begin to uh, co-labor with God to transform us into the image of Christ. So I'm just going to read a couple of selections out of here. But having your spirit come to life is not the same as getting a new soul. There's more involved with the redemption of our souls. All right, so what he's saying in here is, uh, first of all, he said that he's created us in his image. And if you would like to know how he revealed that to me, you can just check out the video called How We Were Made. All his children uh, were made like that, so that might you might find that interesting. All right, so he says what he's doing is bringing us back to the original creation without spot or blemish. Now, at this point, this will be the man-child, the first fruits, who will re be redeemed in this way. It's those that have gone through uh, an extreme refining process to uh, the end of self, the death of self. All right, so it's, and it's talking about the redemption spoken of in Luke 21, 38. So, those who are part of this company will become like Adam before the fall. There is something glorious on the horizon. All right. Now, so we have three groups uh, when we talk about Revelation. The man-child, the, the woman that gives birth to the man-child, and then her offspring. Now, the man-child gets caught up to heaven. The woman gets taken to a, a safe place. And her offspring get persecuted. And I wanted to share this because in the second word that I received, it says there is still a short time for those ones that are um, in that group that are to be persecuted to repent. So that is why I wanted to get this out. That's actually the main, the main reason. All right, so I'll just read this little section. It says, when your spirit is born again, it is able to become dominant once again over your heart, which is your soul, which is wicked and needs to be redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Occultists and New Age believers have learned the truth that God is within everyone, but the problem is they are trying to remove the world and all its filth without Jesus. Only through the blood of Jesus and the word of Jesus can this be achieved. His pure and perfect blood remits the sin, while his word renews the mind. This is done in unison and simultaneously as you walk with Christ and allow him to change you. What does that mean to walk with Christ? That means radical obedience. It means there's no such thing as no Lord. I, I 
spoke of this on what does it really mean to repent video, if you would like a little bit more of an elaboration on that. Okay, so without these two things, you get an even more counterfeit version of yourself. False peace, false light, and more self-control handed over to the enemy of this world to control you. All right, so we need Jesus. And we are not the Christ. I'm sorry, we are not the Christ. And do you know how I know that? Because we sin. I sin and you sin. And John in 1 John said, if we say that we don't sin, then we're not walking in the light. We need to acknowledge who we are and what we do. So we need the true Christ. We need Jesus Christ to come and redeem us. All right. So it says, a new you, death to self, the old you, the world in you, antichrist within you, the flesh, the soul and carnal nature of man is antichrist. It's us sitting on the throne that Jesus deserves, right? Us living our own lives, our, uh, being the king of our own lives. And that is not the way of the Spirit. Okay, now this is speaking of the, the, the man-child. There is a groaning in the Spirit as each of my chosen ones are birthed, born again in their soul, not only in your spirit, but also in your soul. Being born again in your soul includes your blood and DNA as the water of my word and the blood of my son transforms you. So, this is Christ in you. Skipping ahead, it says, Although the blood is within our physical body and is made up of matter, there is a spiritual element, the breath of life, within our blood also. And our blood is actually classed as part of our soul. So when our soul is redeemed, our blood is also redeemed. Uh, in Leviticus 17, 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. So the word uh, life in this passage is nefesh in Hebrew. The word for soul is also nefesh. Life and soul are in the blood. Okay, skipping down, the Lord said, I am forming an army, an uprising of my kingdom against the world, Christ in you. Not only is the new you being revealed, but Christ within you will give you strength, his strength, his gifts, his fruit, his healing, his power, and his anointing. He cannot rise up in you until the old you is gone. Yes, please look at the end of self video where the Lord explained to me how this happens. But essentially, our radical obedience causes our self life to lose its grip on us. And eventually, it falls away. All right. So the old you needs to die, so the new you can be raised in resurrection power. The glory of my son being revealed in my sons and daughters. Then there will be more of you. Those who are birthed in this time will help to raise up people in my kingdom by teaching them what it takes to be born again, not only in spirit, but also in in soul and the physical body. Your soul is about to be born again. Your mind, your will, your conscience, and your emotions. Not only this, as you have believed in Jesus to do what he promised to do and followed him, his blood will remit the sins. The genetic inheritance, which is the blueprint of who you are, will be healed of impurity. This will be awesome to see. The corruption will be removed from your DNA, so only the blueprint of your original self, whom God made, will remain. This is good news. No more corruption in your blood. Your DNA will be pure and perfect, as is mine. You will become the real you, 
with Jesus in you, giving you his power. The resurrection of your physical body is when Jesus returns. That's later. So, in order for this to happen, we do not need esoteric knowledge or philosophy or theology. We just need humility and obedience. As it says in Luke 10, 21, we need to become like little children. We need to acknowledge that God is our Father and it's his house and we need to submit ourselves to him fully. That's all. It's very simple. It's not easy, but it's very simple. All right. So it goes on to say, you will be healed at a cellular level. No more anxiety. That would be awesome. Then I asked God what being born again in our soul and DNA meant for man. This is what I heard. This is not me, the girl writing this. This is what I heard. The power of the blood and being washed in the word removes sickness and disease from you. It's very interesting because last year when I was talking to the Lord about my sicknesses and telling him, you know, that I felt like I was under quite an attack uh, concerning my health. And he said, too little, too late. <laughs> and he was so happy. So I'm really praying that I will get to experience this deliverance <laughs> from sickness. Anyway, uh, when you allow Jesus to remove the world from you and return you to the original creation, he is transforming your DNA and removing all sin and corruption from you. The consequences of sin is death. By removing the sin, you remove the sting of death. It's an outworking process. Some who are standing here today on this earth will not suffer physical death. Those who remain in Christ will be caught up with him and receive their immortal bodies after the tribulation. All right. After you are born again in your soul, you and Jesus together in partnership grow and develop the new man. The old man will try and rise up again, but you must resist the temptation to sin. Walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Jesus broke the power of the curse of death at the cross. Death and deterioration of the physical body can be halted as you walk in new life. It is all to do with the choices you make. Sin or no sin, sin leads to death and obedience to the spirit leads to life. It is much easier to follow the leading of the spirit when your soul and DNA is healed and born again. Praise God. So. Yes, and the lady that wrote this said after researching and reading the word, she believes that this is spoken of in the Bible. And every experience that we have must be confirmed and backed up by scripture. Anything we experience that uh, doesn't align with scripture has to be... Uh, Put in the trash basically okay god will not counter his word so that's why we need the word so much it's it's an objective uh thing that we can look at to make sure that our subjective experience is from god because if it's not it won't line up with his word all we can really do is stay close to our Savior, live each day in his presence, and ask him to show us any unyielded areas that are blocking all he has for us. Jesus died to give us fullness of life. He wants more than anything for us to be able to access it. And she has a prayer at the end, and I've just highlighted part of it. I want to be part of your heavenly army of saints that rises up in the power of Christ against him, the Antichrist spirit. Use me to glorify your name and glorify your kingdom. And I highlighted that because uh, when I received last year uh, that vision of 
uh, the judgment in favor of the saints. That's uh, Daniel 7.22. I also received John 17.1, where Jesus said, The hour has come. Glorify your Son so that your Son may be glorified. Bring glory to you. And I believe this man-child is uh, also the Son. All right, and then... I also received just yesterday a beautiful word from Behold I Come. I am not sure if that's a YouTube channel or a, a website. I don't have a, a person's name to go with it, but it's just Behold I Come. And it talks about the transformation of, it says transformation of the crown jewels within the bride. Um, it says, my first fruits, the manifested sons and daughters of the Most High, uh, will be taken, taken up. So this is also referring to the man-child. And like I said, if you would like a full copy, because it's well worth reading the whole thing. Um, these are the ones who have laid their entire lives down on my altar as living sacrifices. This is the first remnant I will transform into my image to assist me in power and mighty authority as the world plunges into tribulation. So the purpose of the man-child being redeemed is to help the world and all those who choose to follow the Lord. All right. The remainder of the remnant church who require further refining will undergo persecution and great tribulation in order to be called my wedding guests. All right. Those not walking in complete obedience, truth, and holiness will remain to endure great turmoil such as the world has never seen. Okay, I'm just going to read this section here. The comfortably numb positions this larger group has embraced. So those are, are the ones that uh, identify and call Jesus Messiah, but whose fruits don't reflect it. All right. The comfortably numb positions this larger group has embraced will suddenly become a grave and stark reality check as they realize they did not take my warnings and instructions seriously enough. Too many believe they will escape tribulation and go about their lives, living the way they feel like living, not seeing a problem with it. This is not of me. Deception runs deep in my church, and only you are accountable for your journey with me. I desire only purity and will not take as my bride anything but that purity. Darkness and light cannot dwell together. Therefore, any form of darkness, however slight, when willfully accepted in one's life, will not be accepted to be my holy bride. Events unfold now with terrible speed, and for those still dabbling in the things of the world but professing me, the outcome will be better. But I will never forsake you if you continue to seek me. After I translate my pure bride, they will be a great comfort to the remnant left for a time, as you will witness my glory radiating from them, and truth will manifest before your eyes. There is still a moment to choose to repent. But I tell you, this opportunity will end suddenly and abruptly. And this is the main reason I wanted to put out this video. because. There is still a moment to choose to repent. So if you or anyone you know is dabbling in the world and living your own way rather than the way that the Lord is leading you, please take this opportunity and repent. Give your life fully and completely to the Lord. And Lord, help me to give my life fully and completely to you. I ask that you would help us all to see any, any areas that we have withheld from you or any areas where we are still um, in sin. Show us, Lord. Help us to repent. 
prepare us for what's coming. And if possible, let us be made worthy to escape. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, I would like to also just refer you to a video by Diana Olivieri. It's called Gates Closed on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is the day that the great judge hands down his judgment for the next year. And as I shared in that video, in that flyer, be prepared, everything is about to change. Lord, may we be found in right standing with you. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Lord, let us press into you and seek you with all our hearts, all our minds, all our souls, and all our strength. Illuminate all that does not please you and give us the grace to repent and receive your mercy. We ask in the precious name of your beautiful and glorious Son, Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I love you. The Lord is good. He has given us yet a little time. Let us make the most of it. <laughs>